All right. Good to see all y'all here today. I'm glad you're all here. Um, we're going to uh, talk today, and now that Easter is over, it's time for us to uh, move past Easter, and it's also time for this church to move on. Okay, we've, uh, we've been through a little bit of a transition here lately in our church. So what we want to talk, I want to talk to you today about our church, not anybody else's church, but our church. Where do we go from here? All right. And what do we do from now on? All right. <clears throat> As you know, this is the word grace in our name is not just a name. All right. This is a grace church. We teach grace here, okay? If you have a problem with grace, you're in the wrong place, okay? Now, grace, if you go back to Galatians 5 where we were, this is as good an explanation of grace as there is. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Now, notice here, this ain't talking about salvation at all, is it? This is, because who's he writing to? He's writing to people who are already saved, isn't he? Yeah. He's talking about in your daily life, when you worship, when you do anything, from, the, from now that you are saved, this is what you need to do. And that is stand fast in your liberty. You have Christ died to give you liberty. Now, what does this word liberty mean? It means that you are free in this context. You are free to be yourself. Okay? That's what this church is all about. We want everybody in this church to know that they are free to be themselves. We are not trying to change you into little good little Christian soldiers who all walk a certain way and talk a certain way and dress a certain way and do things a certain way, right? Or, or sing only certain songs or anything like that. We have the liberty to be ourselves. This church stands on that liberty. Okay? We stand on that. That's exactly what it tells us to do, isn't it? The Bible tells us to do that. Okay? So, sometimes we have people who come in the church who try to turn us into the kind of church that they want us to be. The only problem is, is they always try to take away our liberty, don't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either we're playing the wrong songs, you know what I mean? Or they don't like the way we dress. Mm -hmm. Or somebody's wearing a hat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do these things are. really matter? No. no. Does it matter? No. no. Not when it comes to, to what's really important. You know? What's truly important is coming to know the truth. Right? Because it... You cannot believe the truth if you don't know the truth, okay? That's why in this church, from the, very, from the very beginning, our motto has always been that we seek truth and not religion, okay? We don't seek religion because religion, what happens with religion is, is it turns into never fails, it turns into ritual, okay? And ritual turns into something that people depend on, mm -hmm. all right? And anytime you have something in your life that you depend on other than Jesus, mm -hmm. then you're going in the wrong direction. Amen. Yeah. Now, people who try to put religion on us are all well-meaning people. It's what they grew up with. It's what they've been taught. It's what they're used to. Okay? And they believe in it. All right? Now, they have the liberty and the freedom to believe that. 
and to be that way and to search out a church that does those kind of things okay they have that liberty we don't we don't make anybody stay here obviously we we don't make anybody come to church here right you come here because I'm sure you all have your own reasons but I'm hoping that you come here because you hear the truth here two reasons because you hear the truth here you're taught the truth and because the people in this church love each other we love each other and we take care of each other as long as you have those two things that is an awesome church okay because anytime you try to add religion to it people will judge each other on how well other people keep the religion Amen, that's right. you know what I mean right. and anytime there's judgment there's not love love and judgment can't be in the same place okay I've always been the kind of pastor that behavior is not something that I preach on, right? I don't preach on behavior. Most churches you go into them, these are churches that are trying to combine um, the gospel of the circumcision with the gospel of the uncircumcision. We are the uncircumcision. We are under only one gospel, okay? But people who try to mix the two, they try to put people under back under the law all right if you're not doing this and you're not doing this and you're not doing this then you're not a good little Christian right you're not gonna find that here okay I am never I do not preach on behavior I am never gonna tell you how you should act what my main goal is is I teach you what this is okay every week y'all are my witnesses every week i open this up and we talk about what's in here don't we yes now i i don't do a lot of of, of feel good sermons and all that kind of stuff we just talk about what's in here my responsibility is to teach you what's in here what you do with it is completely up to you and I have no right to judge you, okay? On what, on how you act, how you dress, what you do when you're not here, even what you do when you are here. Now, I'm not gonna let anybody tear the place, tear the building down, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna let somebody come in here and start uh, speaking in tongues and things like that, right? But at the same time, I'm not going to tell you how you are to behave. That's between you and God. I am completely out of that. There are people who would tell, who tried to tell me lately that it's my responsibility how you act. It's not. It's not my responsibility at all. I'm supposed to tell you <coughs> you should do this and you should do this and you should do that. Okay. There's people who think I should do that, that I have that responsibility, but I don't. I'm not taking that responsibility. That is not up to me, and that's not grace. That's religion. Anytime somebody tells you how to act, that's religion. I will never tell you how to be Renee. I'm never going to tell you how to be Cindy. Because to tell you the truth, I have no idea how she does that. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how to be you. We are to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. All right? That liberty is you are free to be yourself. That's what this whole country was built on, is freedom of religion. Isn't that true? This country was built on freedom of religion. And people are trying to come in and take our freedom away from us. All right? We're not going to let that happen. Go to Hebrews chapter 10. This is 
suddenly got very warm in here. Are y'all feeling it? No. You got smoke still cold? It's smoky. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. Alright. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. Now, this is written to the Jews. Don't get me wrong. So, uh, this is written to the, to the people who are under the gospel of the circumcision. Right? But it, it can teach us as well. All the Bible is good. Right? There's nothing in it that's bad. As long as we rightly divide and we know who he's talking to. Alright? And if we know that, then we can take out of it what we need to take out of it and leave alone what we need to leave alone. Okay? Verse 24. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's start in verse 22. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Now Paul is, uh, well, this isn't Paul, but the writer is talking about how saved people should act. It says, let us, no, 22, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of our faith. So that's the first thing, right? Mm -hmm. Have full assurance of your faith. How do you have full, excuse me, how do you have full assurance of your faith? By knowing what this says, mm -hmm. okay? You need to know what this says. It's not enough to just believe. You need to know what this says, okay? The more, the better you know this, the more you will trust Jesus, all right? The more you will trust, the better you know him, the more you trust him, right? All right? So that's how you have full assurance of your faith. The better you know him, the more assurance of your faith you'll have, all right? Let's hold fast the profession of our faith without waiting. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I did it again. <laughs> Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Okay? Our faith is in the one who promised. Right? And the Bible says... That he is faithful. Alright? If he says I'm going to do something, he's going to do it. Right? So we are to have full assurance that he is going to do exactly what he says he'll do. Verse 24, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of as is as the manner of some is but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. You know why we have a church? Because of verse 25. Not, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Okay? There's a lot of people who do that. You know? I go to a Bible study on Monday nights. Right? We have, we assemble together. Right? We have our little you know, but when it comes to Sunday, they're on the internet listening to some preacher somewhere else. in Chattanooga or somewhere else. Instead of coming to a church that teaches the truth. That sounds just like as the manner of some is, doesn't it? They don't think they need church. Church is not that important to them. As long as they're learning, church isn't important. But it is. It's very important. If church wasn't important, trust me, I wouldn't be doing this. I like watching football on Sunday. I haven't done it for about 10 years. But I always enjoyed it when I did you, you know what I mean? Not that I don't enjoy this. Don't hit me wrong. <laughs> I love y'all. And I love to be with y'all. Because I feel loved whenever I'm here. You know? And that's the most important thing in it. It says, not forsaking them. But notice first, 
Verse 22, the first thing is, is your faith, isn't it? All right, the first thing is your faith. Let's get your faith right, all right? Let's, let's make sure that your faith is in the right thing. Let's make sure that your faith is in the right person. Let's come to know the person that our faith is in, all right? The faith is what starts all of it. The next thing that he, that he mentions here is to love. Faith comes first for a Christian. Faith comes first and then love, loving other people. You know, Jesus said people will be able to tell that you're mine by the way you love other people. And Jesus wants people to know that you belong to him. And you do that through loving other people. Okay? Now, until we come to the knowledge of Christ and see his example, until we have the love of Christ inside of us, we have trouble loving other people. For Because until Christ comes into our life, selfishness runs rampant. It's all about self, right? So the, what, the people that you love, you only love conditionally, right? As long as they do what they're supposed to do and they're not mean to me or they're not talking behind my back or they're not doing this or they're not doing that, you know what I mean? Then we'll love them. But as soon as they mess up, I don't have time for them anymore. Gotta go find somebody else to love. Right? But once you have Jesus in your heart, you have the ability to love people unconditionally. And it's not something that comes easy. It's something that takes practice. You know what I mean? So practice faith, practice love, and assemble together. Because we need encouraging. We all need encouraging. We all have lives that aren't perfect. All right? We need to be encouraged by other people who are in some ways going through the same thing that we're going, trying to live a Christian life in a fallen world. That's one thing that we all have in common. Trying to love people unconditionally. That's one thing we all have in common, isn't it? We need to come and for, not forsake the assembly of ourselves together, to come together, assemble together, encourage each other, teach each other, love each other, because love is one of those things that you give away what you have. All right? And if I can put a little love in Renee's heart, sometime this week, Renee is going to give that love away to somebody else. And then those people can give that same love away to somebody else. One love can just be spread all over the world that way. You know? One person. You know, you've seen these commercials. that They've got these commercials going now where somebody goes up and they uh, do something really nice for somebody. I don't even know what they're advertising. But they go up and they do something really nice for somebody and then that person goes and does something nice for somebody else and then that person goes and does something nice for some, somebody else. That's the way it's supposed to work. Right? You give of yourself, and when you do, they give of their selves. Right? And you think, well, if I keep doing that, I'm going to run out of self. But when you become a child of God, you never run out. You never run out of love. You never run out of unselfishness. Right? You never run out. It just keep the more you give away, the more God gives you. Okay? That's what this church is all about. Okay? We're not about being, you know, religious stuff. We're about our about faith, about love, and about assembling together to encourage each other, to teach each other, to love each other. We're here for encouragement. When things go bad, people tend to drift away from church a lot of times. But that's really when they need it the most, isn't it? That's when it's really when they need it the most. 
And another thing that we need to understand about church. Church, when you come to church, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about serving everybody else. It's about serving the rest of the people. You know, there's a lot of people that will come to church and if they don't feel like they're getting what they need out of the church, you know what I mean? Maybe we don't have the right uh, Sunday school class or maybe they don't like the way I teach or maybe they don't like the songs that we sing or something like that and they feel like they're not getting anything out of the church. It's obvious people feel that way because if they didn't, the place would be full, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of people that don't believe that this church gives them what they're looking for. All right? Church is about taking care of each other. It's about what you can give. It's not about what you can get. Okay? We're not to forsake, we're not to assemble together for so that all of us can get what we need out of it. We assemble together so that we can help the other people who have assembled together with us. All right? That's why you, you see people in this church that they do nothing but serve. Nothing but serve. Never think of themselves. But they do nothing but serve. Robbie's one of them. Everybody knows that. Right? Robbie's one of those people, and she, she serves. All right? Oh, if we could all be like her. We must understand that no man is an island. Okay? Everything you do has an effect on everybody around you. Starting with your own family. What you do affects your whole family. And what affects your family affects your church. And what affects your church affects your community. And then your state. And then your country. And then your world. Everything you say and do is like a little drop looks like a little pea being dropped in a pool of water. The ripples just go out like this, don't they? Now they get weaker as they go out, right? You don't have as much effect on the world as you do on your immediate family and your church family, right? But there is an effect, okay? For assembling together is a good effect, okay? That's a ripple that we want to go way out. All right? Go to Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to change up just a little bit here. Ephesians chapter 4. And this is one of the things that Paul says about the church. Now, Paul, first he says, don't, you know, assemble yourselves together, right? And then here in Ephesians, he says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So he gave people to help in this assembling together. If there wasn't a message being preached, as much as we loved each other, we'd probably find a reason not to come, wouldn't we? You know what I mean? You wouldn't come just because you love each other. Because you get busy. But when you come here, you learn of what this word says, don't you? Mm -hmm. And that makes it worth coming. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what did he do? It says here he gave some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And why did he give them? For the protecting, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body. Now the word edifying means to build up. Okay? For the edifying of the body. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. 
that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So God gave us people. Where is the answer? Oh, it was in chapter 4, verse 11. I'm sorry, I started at verse 11. <laughs> So God gave us people to help, right? Now, as the pastor here, I have several jobs. And just so that you understand what they are, I'm going to let you know. Uh, I am an evangelist. Uh, an evangelist presents the gospel. Now, evangelism isn't my main job. There are some, uh, there are some men who do nothing but evangelism. Right? You see them on the TV all the time. They are evangelists. They go out and they preach like Billy Graham never pastored a church. Okay? He was an evangelist. He went out and he presented the gospel. Now, the gospel he presented was wrong, but he presented the gospel. That was his job. He was an evangelist. I do that from time to time. It's not my main job as the pastor here at this church, but I do do that from time to time. All right? The next thing is I am a preacher. You know, a lot of people just think of me as a preacher. They don't think of me as a pastor. You know what I mean? They just call you a preacher. All right? I'm a lot more than just a preacher, but I am a preacher. All right? What a preacher does is he declares doctrine. Right? A preacher tells you what this says. He reveals to you the word of God. All right? He tells you and rightly divides it so that you understand what part is for you and what part was for the Jews. All right? Because most of this book was written to the Jews. All right? We can take stuff out of it, but most of it was written to the Jews. There's only nine epistles by Paul that are written directly to us. All right? And my job is to help you to understand which parts are for us and which parts were for the Jews. Okay? Now, even the part that's for the Jews, we can learn from that. Okay? We just have to be careful not to follow in the same doctrine because our doctrine is different from their doctrine. Okay, and we, we all understand that because we've been talking about this for for years, haven't we? We've always taught the Bible in context. We've always rightly divided the word, haven't we? We've always done that from the very beginning. So an evangelist, I mean a preacher, declares doctrine. Now a pastor, which I am a pastor, has many jobs. One, shepherding the flock. I lead the flock. I am to be a leader. Okay? A shepherd also takes care of the flock. He gives his life for the sheep. Okay? I give my life for you. That's my job. Alright? That's why I don't sit at home on Sundays and watch football. Because that's not my job, is it? My job is to give my life for you. All right? I do that by spending time, even when we're not here, studying the Word. So I know what to preach on Sundays. Right? I study the Word. You know? I, I give of my time, even when I'm not around y'all, to be a pastor of this church. Going and visiting people in the hospital. Doing your weddings and your funerals. You, you see what I mean? Being there when you need me. Okay? That is shepherding the flock. Number two is I am to be an example. Okay? Now, I'd like to say, like Charles Barkley, I am not a role model, but it's not true, is it? All pastors are role models, whether you like it or not. All right? And if I 
if I can be an example of how to love others, that's what I want to do. If I can be an example of how to study the Word, that's what I want to do. All right? That's part of my job. All right? Next, I am to protect the doctrine. All right? I am to make sure that I'm teaching correct doctrine and protect that doctrine from people who might come in and try to skew it. You know what I mean? There's a lot of there's a lot of people out there who will who will try to take take a piece of the doctrine and twist it a little bit <coughs> so that it says what they believe. Okay? People want to turn they, they want to take verses out of context and twist the words so that it says what they already believe. All right? My job is to forget about what I believe and teach you what this says. All right? In correct context so that you understand what is for you and what was for somebody else. Because it's, it's kind of like the gospel. Trust me, you cannot get saved by believing in John 3, 16. There are millions of people out there today who believe that you can get saved by believing in John 3, 16. You won't get you saved. All right? Somebody has to say that. Somebody has to say, hey, this won't save you. That's protecting the doctrine. That won't save you. This will. That's protecting the doctrine. Okay? When it says uh, in, uh, in Mark that you must be baptized to be saved, water baptism to be saved, it's my job in protecting the doctrine to say water baptism was done away with when, Paul's, when Paul started teaching. Paul got a, an entirely different revelation from God than what had ever been given before. That's why it was called the mystery. All right? It had been hid down through the ages by God. He didn't want anybody to know it until Paul came along to teach it. We have to understand that. And, by, and that's how you protect the doctrine. I'm also to be a leader to help guide you in the right direction. And also, and then there's prayer. It's my job to pray for all of you. Okay? Keep you in my prayers constantly. That's part of my job as a pastor. Now you might be saying, okay, now we know what your job is. What's my job? Right? Although, y'all might not have been asking that at all. Maybe you don't want to know what your job is, but you're going to find out anyway. Okay? Your job is to support this ministry in any way that you can. And in doing, you support the ministry of Jesus Christ. If you believe that we are teaching the truth here, okay, then, and that's why you come here, right? If you want to be a part of this church, if you want this ministry to keep going, you must support the ministry. Now, I don't like to talk about money and everything, and that's why I said it the way I did. Support this ministry any way you can. All right? Not all of us have money to give, but we must all remember that this building is not free. $800 at the first of every month. If you don't believe me, they walk in that door every month. <laughs> the first of the month, they're walking in the door waiting for their check. And believe me, if we don't have it, we're going to be back. waving bye-bye. They don't care how nice we are. Because she thinks she can rent it for 12. She'd love to get rid of us. Right? So we have to support this ministry. The light bill comes first of every month. Gas bill, the water bill comes the first of every month. We have to have money if we want to keep this building and keep doing what we're doing here, we have to have money. 
Right? Now, a lot of us don't have money. Right? But we can all give what we can. You know? We, you know, I was, uh, we were talking with the uh, deacons. It's been a couple years ago now. And one of the deacons said to me, he said, you know, if everybody who comes here would just bring, would just give $20 a week, this church would never have to worry about money. We would always, our, our bills could get paid. Sure. If everybody who came to this church just brought $20 a week. Anybody. Now, there's, there's some people in the church that give way more than that. Trust me. You know, and they're the ones keeping the doors open. But all of us can do a little bit. Okay? We can all not go out to dinner one night so that we can support our church. Okay? If it's not a sacrifice, it really doesn't mean anything anyway. You know? Sacrifice a little bit every week so you can put a little bit in the box. Now, I don't care. Now, one thing about this church is, though, if you can't give, we don't hold it against you because we know some people can't. I know when I first got saved, I couldn't afford it. After a while, I started giving, but the first couple of months I went to the church that I was going to where I got saved at, I didn't give anything because I didn't have anything. And the cupcake house is still there. Yeah, it's still there. Mm -hmm. All grown up and everything, mm -hmm. but it's still there. But believe me when I tell you this. Trust me when I tell you this. And if you don't trust me, you don't need to be here anyway, do you? <laughs> trust me when I tell you this. If you find a way to put $20 in that box every week, God will find a way for you not to miss that $20. Okay? It works for me. It always has. From the time I started giving to the church, I have been I have been faithful to it from the very first time that I started. I've never missed it. I've never missed that money. I know people, and, and I've told this story before. I know people, as a matter of fact, I knew this woman named Barbara. You remember Barbara. I knew this woman named Barbara who went to the first church that I got saved in. And she gave 10%. She was on Social Security. And she didn't have a great big Social Security check because she never had a really good job or anything when she was, when she was younger. Um, but she gave 10% of the little Social Security check that she got every month. At the end, after giving that, the money that she had left over would not pay the bills that she had like her, her mortgage and her lights and her all the stuff that you have to pay every week, right? She said from the moment she started giving that 10% every week, she never, she always paid her bills. Even though she didn't have that much money coming in. Her bills added up to about 50 to $100 more than what her check was for. But she paid her bills every week. <coughs> Somehow, she paid her bills every month. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Now that is a blessing. Mm -hmm. And if it takes taking a little money out of your pocket and putting it in that box to be blessed that way, that's not very. Big. That's not a very big cost. We have to understand. For a while, for the last year, we've been bringing in quite a bit. You know, plenty of money. We, are, we haven't been worried about money for the last year. As a matter of fact, the last time I looked, we had several thousand dollars in the bank. Okay? But a lot of that money's gone now. Right. Okay, guys? Mm -hmm. A lot of that money's gone. Now, if we'd have changed the songs we sing and done some things different, done some things other people's way, we'd still have that. We wouldn't have to worry about money in this church. But we weren't willing to do that, were we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So we have to be willing to step up and support this ministry. Because it's going to be gone if you don't. Right? I don't care about getting paid. You do pay me as a sign of faith. It's not like I get paid, you know, a living or anything like that. I get a little bit of money at the end of every month. But if all we have is enough to pay our bills, the bills come first. You know, there's been there's been many months, not lately, but there's been many months. I have gone a year without getting a paycheck. Okay, and I don't mind doing that again. You went for years without a paycheck yeah. until you finally got a little something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did. All I care about is keeping the doors open. All right? That's all I care about. Amen. I don't want you to give money to this church so that we can buy all kinds of brand new stuff and, and do all kinds of wonderful things and pay me more and, and, uh, and you know, pay for a whole bunch of new stuff. I don't care anything about that. I just want to keep the doors open, guys. All right? And I know that without the yard sales every year, <laughs> there were a lot of years we wouldn't have been able to keep the doors open. That's right. Yeah. Correct. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In other words, that means we aren't giving enough to support the church. So we have to have a yard sale <laughs> to make enough money to keep us open for the next six months. Then we have to have another one to help us get enough money to keep it open for another six months. But we can do that too. Yard sales are fine. People love our yard sales. We meet people at our yard sales. People have come to this church because of our yard sales. Nothing wrong with yard sales. Okay? We work hard. Yes, we do. But, but, if, Lord, you can, but if you can't give very much money and you want to be a part of this church, then you better be down here when we're doing the yard sale. <laughs> if you can't give $20, then you come here and you sell $20 worth of stuff. You know what I mean? Does that make sense to everybody? Now, I don't like to talk about money. I have no idea what anybody in this church gives, except for me. I know what I do. And I don't care. I'm going to love you just as much either way. All right? Just want you to know that we can't do this without money. All right? Another thing, another thing that you're that's part of your job is helping others in ways that only you can. Okay, we all have different gifts. All right, we all have been given different gifts to use to help others. All right, it's just like the other uh, Wednesday Wednesday night. Uh, Rob comes in and helps us get the computer all set up. So that we can do that Wednesday night lesson that we had been planning for all these all this time, right? Without him, we couldn't have done it. Nobody else in the whole church could figure it out. But Rob was able to figure it out for us. You know what's even, you know what's cool is when he was done with that, he went out and worked on Miss Andrea's car and got it started because it had gone there. Told her exactly what was wrong with it. Got it going for her. All right? He did what he knows how to do. All right? What's your gift? All right? What's your gift? What do you do to help the other people in this church? You need to think about that. Now, we, we do pretty good here. Everybody has kind of found a place for themselves, you know what I mean? Robbie has started teaching Sunday school, you know, um, other people help in the kitchen. Miss <laughs> Miss Crystal has is the one who takes care of our website and takes care of filming the, the lessons on Sunday and things like that. We everybody's Miss uh, uh, Miss Sandy and Cindy they come and clean the church quite often and and then we have Miss uh, Andrea who's our secretary who takes care of a lot of stuff for us too and we all have different jobs and we all take care of different things right. We need to continue to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another thing that is your is, that's part of your job is sharing what you've learned with others. All right. We 
when, when we come together and we study this word, don't just sit back and listen and then go home and forget about what was said. There's been so many times when I have talked to people who have been to church and I say, what did you learn today? And they can't tell me. It's like, why did you go? They can't even tell you what the lesson was about. You know what I mean? Well, I can't explain it the way the pastor did. I didn't ask you to explain it the way the pastor did. I want to know what you got out of it. What did you learn today? We need to come with, with the idea of learning something that we can share with somebody else. I hope that there's been something that I've said today that you can share with other people. When you invite them to church, you can just talk about what I've talked about today. This is the kind of church we are. We seek truth, not religion. We teach grace. And then grace, and then grace some more. We're all about grace. If you didn't do nothing but learn that today, that's something you can share with other people. Okay? Teach your children to do the same thing. Okay? Because children can share the gospel just like you can. And nine times out of ten, they have a lot more friends. Okay? And also remember, and pray. Pray for this ministry. Pray for each other. Okay? And remember the prayer request and pray for those people as well. Prayer is part of your part of your ministry as well. Always remember, there are no perfect churches. If you're looking for a perfect church, you're going to spend the rest of your life looking. And when you get to heaven, you're going to realize you missed out on a lot of stuff because you spent so much time looking for that perfect church. Right? If, if you love this church, which I believe all of you do, if you love this church, instead of trying to, instead of leaving to go somewhere else because they're not doing, we're not doing things exactly the way you want to, work to turn things around. If you see something in this church that you don't like, don't come to me and say, you need to fix that. Fix it yourself. You have just as much power as I do. Okay? Fix it yourself. If you don't think the church is clean enough, get your butt in here and clean the church. All right? If you don't like these books, make one yourself. Make enough for everybody. You know what I mean? If you don't like the way something's being done, you don't like, you don't think this is quite up to snuff for some reason or another, fix it. Don't tell me to fix it. I'm kind of busy. In case y'all didn't know that, I'm kind of busy fixing what I can fix. Okay? If you see a problem, fix it. All right? Don't wait on somebody else to. Or tell somebody else, you need to do this. Okay? Sure. Let's go to uh, <coughs> Matthew 22. This is Matthew 22, verse 37. Changing gears here again. All right? This is what, this is the one thing if you don't learn anywhere else, you're going to learn it here. I've never heard this taught anywhere else. So you're going to hear it here. This is what this church is all about. Starting in verse 37. Jesus said unto him, let me, ask, let me start in 35. Then one of them, which was, he's talking about the Pharisees. These are Pharisees, right? Uh, one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. 
This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay? Instead of worrying about trying to keep the Ten Commandments and be a perfect little Christian all the time, my suggestion to you is you do what this is. If you love God with all your heart, all your mind, all right, and you love others as yourself, that's all you need. That's all you need. First, you're, is you, you've got a ministry to God, and then you've got a ministry to others. And all of them are in those two things right there. Now, they're commandments. We're not under the commandments, all right? These are not things that are required of us. But if you want to do anything, if you want to be a good little Christian person, do those two things. Everything else will fall into place. If you love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and you love your brother as yourself, all the rest of it just falls into place. All right? It just falls into place. You're not going to do anything that offends anybody. All right? Although, in today's world, loving other people, loving God and loving other people does offend people. It's just, it's just the crazy world we live in. You know? I don't know if y'all heard about this, but there was there was a club at Harvard University. It's a Christian, it's a Christian-based club, right? And they asked one of their the leaders of their club to step down because of his sexual orientation. Okay? Now that's not something we would do here, but they have that right, don't they? As a religious club, if they don't want somebody that's not of the right sexual orientation to be a part of, to be part of the leadership, they have the right to ask them to sit, step down, don't they? Right? What does it say? Stand fast in the liberty? They have the liberty to do that. It's not something we would do here. We don't judge that stuff. That's not, that's not for us to judge. Right? But they have the right to do that. Harvard defunded that club and told them that they couldn't have a club on their campus anymore. All right? In other words, because they practiced because they practiced their religion when, and we're supposed to have freedom of religion in this country, right? Because they practiced their religion they were kicked out of that university. You know what's funny about that? Is that they, they're like, okay, that offends people. You can't do that. But then they look at the then they look at the Muslims and they say, you say, you can't you can't worship Jesus outwardly because it offends the Muslims, right? But Muslims are worse about all this stuff than we are. Muslims don't just ask gay people to step down; they kill them. But everything the Muslims do is okay and is okay in these universities. You know what I mean? They give them special places just to pray and stuff. Right? But you mentioned the word of Jesus on the college campus these days, and you are run out of there. So this is not none of this is going to be easy. Okay? Because the world has gone crazy. And it ain't going to get any better. It's just going to get worse. Christians are going to be persecuted worse and worse and worse and worse as we go. Okay? That's another reason why we need church. A place where we can, all, the, all of us who believe the same thing can come together and be encouraged by each other. All right? And can lift each other up, build each other up, so that we can go back out in the world and spend a week in this evil, sinful world. Dark place, all right? That the devil has created. Go to Colossians two sixteen. I know I've run a little long, guys. I'm sorry, but this is important. Colossians two sixteen. 
Colossians 2, 16. Maybe Robbie will finish her lesson today. <laughs> Robbie's been teaching the same <laughs> lesson for about two months now. She's never been able to finish it. Maybe she'll finish it today. Colossians 2, 16. Let the word of Christ, no, that's three, 2.16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day, which were are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. What this is saying here, and this is this is the main point of this church, all right? It goes right back to the very first. Stand fast in your liberty. Let no man therefore judge you. Now it talks about meat and drink and and Sabbath days and moons and and all this kind of stuff. But the main word here is, let no man judge you. All right? Stand fast in your liberty. All right? Be yourself. Christ died so that you can be yourself. So you can worship him the way that you desire to worship him. In a way that means something to you. All right? We are not going to let somebody come in here and <coughs> judge us for the way that we do things. Okay? Notice here... And this, was, this, this is something that I thought very interesting, and I've never seen it before, uh, because I think I just glazed over it. It's not that I haven't read this before, but I just glazed over it. Which, verse 23, which things have indeed a show of wisdom, religious acts show, have a show of wisdom. In other words, they portray wisdom, but they're not really wisdom, are they? And then it goes, in will worship and humility. Will worship. In other words, you're worshiping what you want. You know, you're doing, you know, this is my will. So I'm going to worship it. And I'm going to find a way to make this thing say that it's okay. <coughs> All right? When you start putting bonds on other people, that's will worship and false humility. Oh, I just love everybody, but it's kind of like somebody said something about uh, what's your son's name? Which one? Dylan. 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 Thank God. <laughs> Thank God you were here to tell me. Somebody said something about Dylan wearing a hat when he was leading worship, right? If that's what you're worried about, you're in the wrong place. Yeah. Amen. We're not here to worry about what, the way people dress or, or, or anything like that. If the way somebody dresses offends you, then go to them and tell them. But really, you don't even have the right to do that. But if it truly offends you, Wait till church is over and go to them and say, you know, hey, I, and then let them talk to you about it. Talk to them about it. You know what I mean? So that they can tell you what I just read here. You know? And explain to you. This is grace. It has nothing to do with people being, you know, the way you dress or anything like that. 
right? But I was told that if somebody won't, won't conform to the way that we think things should be, then it's okay if they leave. If they won't conform, then we, we don't want them here anyway. They need to conform. Okay? We are not conforming. We're a non-conformity church. We are not conforming to anything. All right? We are going to be ourselves. Except what that says. That is the only thing. That Bible right up there. That is all that we That's conform right. to. Amen. That's right. We are not conforming. Because, and I know this, and I know this to be true. I had talked to uh, talked to a friend of mine the other day, right? And she goes to a church. It's called a Grace Church, but I think they, I don't think that they actually rightly divide. But anyway. She said, I go to this church, and there's a lot of older people in the church, and there's a lot of younger people in the church, right? The older people don't like the music because it's a young music uh, worship leader, and he plays a lot of the modern music like what we do, right? They don't like the music. They don't like this. They don't like that, right? It doesn't matter what you do. If we could have changed everything in this church, changed the music, change the way we dress, change the, the, way, the way we do almost everything, right? And think, okay, now these people will be happy and they'll stay here and, and uh, they'll keep supporting the ministry and this is all wonderful now because we've just, we've let go of all that stuff. We realize that, you know, what we want to do is not as important as bringing people in, right? We could have done that, but what was going to be next? What was going to be next? Because there's always something next. Correct. You could have done everything that they could have said, we want you to do this, and, and I have the list, probably in my briefcase here. They gave me a list, okay? Mm -hmm. We want you to do this and this and this and this and this, right? This is what we want you to do. This is what we expect from you. We support this ministry. We bring our money here. We are doing all this stuff. So this is what we expect from you. We want you to do this and this and this in this church. Okay? But, and if the people don't like it, they're welcome to leave. That don't go. That don't go here. You know what I mean? It would have been something else. Next it would have been, mm, it's probably not a good idea for y'all to smoke out there on the deck. That offends people. Yeah, that would have been next. Yeah, that would have been next. Yeah, yeah that would have. You know what I mean? It would have been something like that. Or we don't, we would rather you not play Blessed Assurance. You can play the old Blessed Assurance out of the Baptist hymnal, but we don't like the modern version. And believe me, that song ain't going nowhere. I love that song. We're going to play it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know? There's, it was always going, it's always going to be something. So if we don't start with anything, then we can't have something next, can we? All right, so we're just going to be ourselves. We're going to love the Lord. We're going to love each other. And we're going to take care of each other. That's the kind of church this is. All right? You come any way you want to come. You dress any way you want to dress. Okay? Now, I, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't wear a bikini because I'd just get distracted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I ain't coming when it gets hot. <laughs> we don't want to see hey, this. If you want to wear a bikini to church, Rob, uh, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't come. <laughs> it's always going to be something. Yep. It's always going to be something. Yeah, I can't wear my bikini or I have to wear a whole piece. And then you're going to make me shave my legs, so I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Let's go to Galatians 6 and I'll close there. I'll never forget, you know, we was talking about that. I'll never forget 
My, well, my mother will never forget. <laughs> the first time she came to this church, you know, since we were uh, uh, here and everything. I don't know. I don't think it was No, we here. wasn't here. It Where wasn't was here. That? I think it was in the old building or something. Yes. My mother will never let me forget. The girl who came in with shorts and boots on. Yes. Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> my mother will never let me forget that. What do you mean? Letting her come in there with shorts and boots and, and a halter top. She wasn't wearing a halter top. But that's what my mother, you know what I mean? Yeah. I said, it's Melissa. Melissa can come any way she wants to come. I'm just glad she's here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but my mother, you know, she grew up in a little Baptist church all her life. And, you know, she just wasn't used to that. And she didn't get that at all. Uh, but, but she did later. Huh? But she, she did later. later. Yeah. 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 Yes, she does. Galatians 6. 6 what? Before I'm thinking. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, hold verse, on, everybody. You're going to blow us up. <laughs> verse, verse number 2. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. You want to know how you're supposed to act as a church member? Read Galatians chapter 6, and it tells you. Okay? That's all I ask of y'all. Alright? That's all I ask of you. To be a part of this church. Just think of other people before yourself. You know what I mean? And bear your own burdens. Okay? And that's my message.